Dr. George Dixon, the originator of CycleVision Tours, the answer to stationary cycle boredom. As a physician and educator, I'm aware of the advantages that exercise offers, but also how difficult it can be to enthusiastically adhere to a regular workout schedule. To prepare for the tour, first you need to find your pulse. Place two fingers on your wrist at the base of the thumb. To help you time your pulse, we'll use a pulse check in the lower left corner of the screen. It will count down six seconds to the word start. When you see the word start, count your pulse beats until you see the word stop. Then take that number and multiply by 10 for your actual pulse per minute. Go ahead and try it. Your target heart rate is the number of beats per minute you want when exercising your heart, lungs, and vascular systems. Look at this chart as modified for additional safety from the World Health Organization. Find your age and target heart rate. Your bicycle should be in good working order and adjusted to allow you to sit comfortably upright while holding the handlebars with your down leg slightly bent. Your bike can change your heart rate in two ways, speed and tension. Start at 15 to 20 miles per hour and gradually increase the tension. By adjusting the speed, the tension, or a combination of both, you will be able to increase or decrease your pedaling effort and therefore your heart rate. Before and after your cycling tour, you should perform five to 10 repetitions of these six stretching exercises. Trunk twist. Arm circle. Hamstring stretch. Groin and inner thigh stretch. Half stretch. And thigh stretch. Remember, you're only warming up, not exercising, so take it easy. Now, on to the tour. There are three 18-minute segments in this 60-minute tape. Each is designed for three minutes of warm-up, 12 minutes at your target heart rate, and three minutes of cool-down. Your tour coach will help you through with advice and information as to where you are and what you should be accomplishing during your exercise tour. You can use any portion of the tours at your own fitness level, and when you exercise three to four times per week in this fashion, you'll note improvement beginning in about three weeks. You should feel encouraged when it becomes more difficult to reach your target heart rate because your heart and lungs are working more efficiently, so it takes more effort to make them work. In short, you are getting healthier. After you have done the stretching exercises, you are ready to climb on the bike and finally pedal with pleasure. Cycle Vision Tours takes you to Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone Part 1 brings you three tours of this dense mountain wilderness. Our first tour begins on the Grand Loop Road of the Midway Geyser Basin and travels north through a series of hot springs and thermal basins. Land, which has intrigued the minds of men and moved them to great and inspired thoughts. Here in Yellowstone were features of such significance that men were inspired to evolve a new philosophy for the land based on preserving a part of our national scene for the future. For here was established the world's, not just America's, but the world's first national park. Yellowstone itself has nearly 300 miles of public roads. Most major features are adjacent to what is called the Grand Loop Road. Several one-way drives lead off the loop to areas of special interest and will be part of Cycle Vision Tours. As your tour coach, I will be with you throughout each tour to make Cycle Vision Tours an enjoyable and beneficial partner in your exercise program. The first three minutes of each tour are designed for warm-up. You should be pedaling at 15 to 20 miles per hour, working gradually toward reaching your target heart rate. In the lower left corner, you see the number one. 
It tells you which of the three tours you are currently viewing. Watch for this number to change colors. It will be yellow for warm-up, red for exercise, and blue for cool-down. A pairing at strategic times also in the lower left corner is the pulse check, as was demonstrated in the introduction. It will assist you greatly in timing your pulse and monitoring your progress. Hundreds of geysers and springs pouring thousands of gallons of boiling water into the Firehole River every minute. The steam you see off to the left comes from the Grand Prismatic Spring, Yellowstone's largest hot spring. A blue haze rises several feet above the water. Rings of bright orange and yellow algae give the effect of a giant prism around the deep blue pool. We are close to the end of the warm-up section. You should be nearing your target heart rate soon. Of course, the most spectacular features of Yellowstone are the elements of fire and water, which have combined to produce a land of natural wonder. Literally thousands of hot springs dot the thermal basins. Gigantic columns of boiling water are hurled hundreds of feet into the air, causing the ground to shake.
up on your left is the Great Fountain Geyser that often erupts with many powerful bursts reaching 200 feet above the geyser's tremendous terraces. There are essentially two types of geysers, cone and fountain. The Great Fountain Geyser we have just passed illustrates the terraces that are formed by the bursts of geyser deposits. The cone geysers erupt into a continuous stream with the deposits forming a cone as you see directly ahead in the Great White Dome Geyser.
this point, you should reduce your speed and tension. It is important that you gradually return your heart rate to normal. You earn this cool down. So relax and unwind as we tell you a little more about the world's first national park. back on the Grand Loop Road in the Lower Geyser Basin. To the left are the fountain paint pots. Here there is only enough water available to form the bubbling paint-like substance. Approximately 10,000 geysers, hot springs, and steam vents breaking the surface of the land within the park boundaries. Most of them beyond the reach of roads, and only about 500 of them even have names. The thermal activity of Yellowstone is exceedingly rare and highly valuable, both aesthetically and scientifically. Hot springs are known in many parts of the world, but geysers are rare. activity of Yellowstone is exceedingly rare and highly valuable, both aesthetically and scientifically. Hot springs are known in many parts of the world, but geysers are rare. tour, you will find yourself riding along the massive Yellowstone Lake. As the waves lap against the shoreline, you can sense the power of nature as it pulls you along. Your second tour in the Yellowstone takes you cycling east along Yellowstone Lake toward the east entrance of the park. To many people around the world, Yellowstone is a glimpse of a geyser, an elk, or a canyon. But it is certainly more than this. It is a collection of scenic features and nature's curiosities. Yellowstone, the first national park in the world, is a monument to far-sighted conservationists who more than 100 years ago foresaw the need to preserve a bit of primitive America. Begin by gradually increasing your speed and tension as you warm up to reach your target heart rate. Yellowstone is the largest of all of our national parks, covering over two million acres. One of its main attractions is Yellowstone Lake. With its 100 miles of shoreline, it is the largest body of water in North America at this high an elevation, 7,733 feet. Its blue waters fed by the Yellowstone River are 320 feet at its deepest point. Snow runoff is responsible for its very cold temperatures.
Yellowstone Lake is famous for its scenic beauty, its native cutthroat trout, and its backcountry canoeing. The largest population of native cutthroat trout live within the park with the biggest contingency in Yellowstone Lake. The cutthroat is so named because of the two bright reddish orange stripes that flash across its throat. Since 1953, strict fishing regulations allow fishermen to enjoy their sport while still protecting the balance of life. Seasons and limits are stringent, and in some areas, anglers are encouraged to release their fish. You are within one minute of the end of the warm-up period. You should be nearing your target heart rate soon. The south and southeast areas of this lake are for canoeing and rowing only. It is in this area, where no roads or motors are allowed, that wildlife can be experienced at its best. catching up the air. Ride with him for a few minutes to keep your pace and maintain your target heart rate. Concentrate on the movement you are feeling. Let your imagination put you on the road. that Ed is slowing down. Maintain your pace now as we pass him. Just ahead, you will be rewarded with a spectacular view of Lake Yellowstone.
along this gravel beach is Mary's Bay. Here's sandpipers, yellow legs, California seagulls, and other shorebirds can be seen. Hot springs help keep this bay partially open in the frigid winter months. Steam vents melt snow in the meadow just to the left, leaving it open for buffalo to graze. Mark will join you now for the final minutes of your exercise.
reduce your speed and tension. It is important here that you use the cool. As you do so, we have more information we would like to share with you about the park. A large majority of the trees in the park are lodge pole pines. They are so named because the Indians use the tall straight trees for setter poles in their teepees or lodges. 80% of all the forests in the park are made up of these trees. With its two inch green needles and prickling cones, the lodge pole pine is an especially interesting tree. It can actually save part of itself for regeneration. The cones open halfway under usual conditions. Enough seeds always fall out to continue the species, but a reserve stays within the cone, sealed in tough resin. For 10, 20, or even 100 years, the seeds will be sealed up and still capable of life. Fire is the most common releaser. Its heat melts the resin and frees the seed. Fire also cleans the soil of competing plants, including parent trees. As many as 300 seedling pines per acre may spring up as a result of fire. A tree 100 years old may only be three or four inches in diameter. These same trees, if widely spaced, can be as much as one foot in diameter. entrance. We start our third tour here by the Madison River, cycling west toward the park's west entrance. This wide canyon allows the river to move slowly, meandering back and forth. You will see anglers fishing for whitefish, rainbow, and brown trout. Rain shower freshens the air and still lies in small puddles on the pavement. As you warm up, riding through this pleasant valley, gradually increase your speed and tension. The Yellowstone region has been occupied or frequently visited by man since the retreat of the glaciers about 1,200 years ago. The harsh winters probably precluded year-round occupancy for prehistoric man, but artifacts indicate the area was visited extensively as a hunting ground. Crazy John Coulter, the first white man thought to have been in the area, ventured here in the winter of 1807 to 1808. He brought back such wild tales of this wondrous land that he was thought to be out of his mind. Trappers also spent time in Yellowstone. When beaver hats were in fashion, this was a very popular hunting ground. In 1863, the Montana Gold Rush brought a party of prospectors who explored the region. Trapping, 
hunting and prospecting, all served to stimulate interest in this region. But by 1867, there were still no reliable surveys made of this area. Finally, the Surveyor General of Montana was persuaded into the area. His survey team came to the region in 1870. They spent almost four weeks exploring and naming many of the spectacular features, including Old Faithful. On their last night, they camped along the Madison River, near the west entrance. Here they discussed what should be done with this land of many wonders. It was agreed that no part should ever be privately owned, but should be held by the government for public use. Upon their return, they mounted the most successful lobby campaign in history to make Yellowstone a national park. President Ulysses S. Grant signed the bill into law March 1, 1872, placing for the first time ever, anywhere in the world, land under the protection of the government for all of its people to enjoy. You should be near your target heart rate soon. side of the river, you can see high volcanic cliffs eroded by time and weather. They serve as a reminder of Yellowstone's violent and geologic past. Pedal to the movement of the passing scenery. Let the motion you feel encourage you along.
Mark will ride with us for several minutes. Enjoy the company. take a short detour here to get a closer look at the river.
reduce your speed and tension. Madison River was named in 1805 by the Lewis and Clark Expedition for the Secretary of State, James Madison. Lewis and Clark never actually saw Yellowstone, but came across this river in south central Montana. It is considered one of the world's famous fishing streams. As you may have noticed along the way, many fishermen enjoy testing their skills here. The trumpeter swan, with its incredible nine-foot wingspan, is the largest waterfowl species in the world. It is believed that a pair are nesting here along the Madison River this summer. The swans had become an endangered species until provisions were made. Trumpeter swans once flew the skies from the Arctic to the Gulf Coast, but by 1932, only 69 trumpeters could be counted. They had been turned into powder puffs, swans down, feather decorations, and quill pins. Finally, in 1953, the Red Rock Lakes in Montana, just west of Yellowstone, were made into a wildlife refuge. By the 1960s, trumpeter swans were approaching four to 5,000. Now, 15 pairs stay year-round in Yellowstone. Madison River is one of their favorite haunts. This discussion in the audio section of Cyclevision Tours has been drawn from a number of sources. We would like to recognize the following. Exploring Yellowstone by Ruth Kirk. National Parkways, Yellowstone National Park by Michael D. Yandel. Rand McNally National Park Guide by Michael Frome. This concludes our first series of tours of Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone Part 1 is only one of CycleVision's many tours. CycleVision Tours can help you customize your personal fitness program. Use any portion or combination of the tours to your best advantage. Repeated use of this tape will not only help you to establish a regular exercise program, but with each new ride, you will notice sights and sounds not experienced before. Congratulations on your traveling exercise efforts. We look forward to sharing the experience with you again and again.